given full access to the Players' Lounge on the Sports Jack Show with Wayne Gandy. Welcome back to the Sports Talk Show. I'm the Sports Talk Wayne Candy. You can hit us up at 888-926-7562 or 404-603-8770. iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio. You can go to Spreaker or you can go to the Sports Talk page. That's JOC.com. Basketball has had its all-star weekend uh, in a couple of days. The rest of the season would kick off. Uh, most teams have about 30 or less games to finish the season up uh, before the playoffs start. No bigger name in sports uh, has been this season in basketball than the New York Knicks. I call the New York Knicks and the Dallas Cowboys brothers, uh, mainly because they're both uh, highly recognizable. They're both in the media. They they both are valued to be the biggest teams uh, money-wise in both sports. But they haven't done a lot of winning. Super Bowl hasn't come to Dallas since uh, 97, I want to say, is the last year they won. And uh, the Knicks haven't won a championship since the 70s. Uh, and, uh, but they've been in the news, made a lot of noise, and we wanted to talk to New York Daily, uh, the beat writer for the Knicks, Mr. Uh, Stefan Bundy. Good morning to you, Stefan. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going great, going great. Which relationship uh, is in more peril? Uh, the Phil Jackson, Carmelo Anthony, or the James Dolan, Charles Oakley, in your opinion? I think the Carmelo Anthony, Phil Jackson. I don't think there's any reconciliation on the horizon there. I think eventually Dolan and Oakley will get together, although Oakley really doesn't want to at this point. He's been hurt by a lot of things that Dolan said about him, mostly after uh, Oakley was arre- was ejected from the garden and arrested. But I think I think eventually they'll get together. Um, you know, and hopefully too, because Oakley is beloved in New York, uh, and he deserves a, he deserves a spot. You know, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that he gets a job with the organization because that's what he deserves, and everybody loves him over there. So, um, on the other hand, Phil Jackson and Carmelo, I mean, they they haven't gotten along for quite some time now, and uh, you know, they they basically have no use for each other really, and it's almost it feels like almost they're waiting each other out to see which one leaves first. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do they even talk? Because the GM, uh, he's not necessarily around the team a lot, but he comes to practice. He might pop in in a meeting. Do they have any conversation? No, uh, they don't. And wow. uh, Phil, Phil is kind of a quiet guy anyway. And, he, you know, he comes into practice, and every now and then he gives lessons to the team. He does his little, uh, I forget what it's called, like his Zen thing where he has them uh, doing yoga and, and, um, and sitting there with incense candles and stuff like that. But he doesn't really talk one-on-one with Carmelo anymore. Uh, they, they used to have a better relationship, but over the years it kind of deteriorated. And Carmelo didn't appreciate some of the things that Phil Jackson was tweeting and saying about him. So, you know, it's a strained relationship, and I don't see them getting back together. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see which one wins this kind of war because Phil Jackson – has a no opt out clause at the end of the season, and, and Carmelo has his no trade clause. So we'll see what happens. It's very, it's going to be very interesting. Has uh, the owner James Dolan tried to play referee or mediator at all between these two? No, and that's because Dolan, he does, he's using Phil as a sixty million dollar shield basically. So before Phil came in, Dolan was the he was the one getting all the fire. You know what I mean? Like he was the target. And now, as since Phil took over, you know everybody's blaming Phil for everything. And now, and Dolan likes that. Dolan even came out when he did the interview about Oakley and said, "I'm not going to fire Phil. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor Phil's contract." And uh, you know, he I let him. I, I I knew I wasn't very good running a basketball team, so I gave it to you know a guy with 11 rings, and I'm going to let I'm going to fulfill his contract. So as long as Phil wants to stay, Phil's going to stay. How far would you say this James Dolan, uh, Charles Oakley um, riff goes back? How many years would you say? I don't really know the origin or the genesis of it, but it's been it's been many years. I remember interviewing Oakley 
in 2012, and he was he was telling me he said uh, Dolan doesn't like the way I criticize the Knicks. He doesn't like the way I come out and tell the truth. And, uh, you know, I've tried to get a meeting with him. I've tried to get back in with the Knicks, but he doesn't want me there. And that was, that was in 2012. I imagine it goes back further than that. So, um, you know, it's been going on for a while. And, you know, they have different stories about what's the problem. You hear stories about Dolan actually inviting Oakley back to the garden and, and Oakley not even showing up. And then you hear Oakley, like I said, telling me that, you know, he, he doesn't want to talk to me. I tried to meet with him. And he has no interest in it. So, you know, it's a he said, he said thing. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say who's right and who's wrong sometimes, but certainly the way Oakley was dragged out of the garden was tough to watch. Uh, Stefan, good morning. This is Big Kenny. Uh, discord between players in the front office or players and coaches is nothing new in the NBA. Is this particular uh, – if is this particular soap opera – tailor-made for the New York media market? Because it seems like if this were any other team in any other market, it would have been a couple of he said, she says, and everybody would have moved on. But this is a uh, breaking into evening news top story type of coverage with the Knicks. Yeah, you know what? I don't even think it's just New York. I can't remember. Maybe you guys know of a situation where a beloved figure of an organization was dragged out of the arena that he played for and arrested right there. I can't think of a situation where that was happening. So this is even unique, even for the Knicks and their dysfunction. And it also goes to show how much the New York loves the Knicks and how much they want them to succeed. That they they talk about these guys. They, all we hear about is Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, and that '90s group. That that team never even won a championship. But they're they're beloved, like you know, like they you know they won five championships. Um, so. The, the market is thirsting for success here, and the problem is that they've been bad for so long. I mean, before Phil, uh, the you know, Isaiah Thomas had a real rough patch in New York, and this team has been bad for like 15 years. So, you know, it, it's, not just New, it's not just the New York media that's making a big deal out of something. This was something that, that the Charles Oakley situation was something that was crazy. I mean, I was there, and you had um, – Oakley downstairs screaming and cursing for police to let him go. Phil Jackson walked in the room, tried to calm him down, couldn't calm him down. Spike Lee came in. He started crying just at the sight of the situation. And then in the aftermath, you know, Chris Rock walks by and says, what the hell's going on? I mean, it was just a crazy situation. And, uh, you know, it was unfortunate to watch. When you look at this team, uh, the brightest start to me in it because of age and, and talent range is – Porzingis. Now, this is his second year. Are, are, are the Knicks maybe setting it up where he's like, hey, now nah, don't offer me no contract. I don't want to be part of this circus in any way when his well, contract I mean, is up. You know, because he, uh, he'll be up in, a, what, another year or two? And seeing this going he, on with their superstar and their ex-player, not really very inviting to re-sign a contract. Yeah, I mean, but a lot can change in two years. And also the NBA is set up now so that you you basically can, you know, you'd have to really mess up not to retain your guy because they have restricted free agency. So the Knicks, no matter what, the Knicks, as far as negotiating Chris Porzingis' first contract, they're going to have the right to match any team that does. So unless Porzingis says, you know what, I'm going to go overseas, and which he's not going to do, uh, the Knicks are just going to re-sign him to a max contract, and and he's going to be in New York for a while, just because I don't, you know, he loves New York and he re- wants to be here right now, even with all the nonsense that's going on. But on, but on top of that, because of the way the CBA is, uh, it makes it basically impossible to lose a guy if you really, if a team really wants to keep him on his first contract. So, uh, yeah, I expect Porzingis to be around for quite some time, and the Knicks think very highly of him. You know, even though he's been struggling this second half of this season so far, he's kind of broke down a little physically, and that's the, that's a reason to be concerned. But yeah, I expect him to be around certainly past his rookie contract. Last question: We appreciate you taking the time to call into the show, uh, Carmelo Anthony. Uh, is it maybe is it love of the city or pride why he um, won't sign to be traded? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, listen, he. He earned the right to have that no trade clause put in there. 
and you know he has his family set up here. His kid goes to school here. His wife, had, you know, is an entertainer. She, you know, wants to be in this market. And he, you know, you get to choose where you want to work. And I think he earned that right, and he wants to exercise that right. He enjoys the big, bright lights. He likes the spotlight on him. He certainly does. And, you know, he doesn't want to go. I mean, he forced his way to New York from Denver. And now he doesn't want to leave just because the president doesn't want him around. So, um, you know, I respect that. All right. Thank you, uh, Stefan, for calling in and helping us with the show. All right. Thank All right. you. New York Daily News, beat writer for the Knicks, Mr. Stefan Bundy. We'll be back with more of the Sports Talk Show right after this.